Hey, how's it going everybody? So in today's video, I just want to go right ahead and technically show you a project that I did back in 2017. So this idea was something that I was just thinking about in how I can go right ahead and, you know, use something like this, which is a Raspberry Pi that has been turned into a NAS, which is a network attached storage and how I could take this technically with me wherever I go and go right ahead and basically utilize it. So I did pick up technically uh, this little little nano router. So this is just basically a TP-Link. I don't know exactly what model it is. It's uh, so it's 300 megabyte uh, wireless and nano router. So I, I think I paid like $30 for this. So there's really nothing special to it. Here, I'll go ahead and show you. So it's just basically ethernet, power, and a reset button. That's all there is to it. So this idea came up that I was like, okay, how can I basically utilize these two uh, devices and then go ahead and basically put them together to go ahead and make, you know, kind of like a little wireless uh, portable uh, network attached storage that I could take anywhere. Now, this portable device technically needed to be wireless because I wanted to go ahead and use uh, my phone or if I had a tablet or anything like that, I could go ahead and connect to it and then I could just go ahead and access all of the files that are in there. Now, the only downside with this setup is that it really doesn't have internet per se. Like it does have a local network and you are connected to Wi-Fi, but there is no way to go out and actually hit the internet. Let me go ahead and show you exactly what I mean. Here we have a Raspberry Pi. So this is the Raspberry Pi 4 and as you can see, it does have a thumb drive in it. So if you haven't seen my video on how to set up uh, a Raspberry Pi with Open Media Vault, uh, you might want to go ahead and check that out. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm not going to go right ahead and show you how to configure uh, the Raspberry Pi, but you could go right ahead and basically view that video and it's going to, you know, take you uh, from step one all the way to, you know, to the last step. Okay, just to show you exactly visually how it's going to, it's going to look. So here it is it's everything's connected so it's just basically connected via ethernet so as soon as i configure this it's going to be of course a wireless router uh, of course no internet and then at that point you could go right ahead and connect your you know phone tablet or whatever and then just connect it here and then go right ahead and basically access the nas so first thing i need to do is go right ahead and configure the router so let's go right ahead and show you exactly how to do that so for this little nano router uh, to be configured, I actually need to go right ahead and actually connect to it wirelessly. So let me go ahead and show you exactly how to do that. Now, actually, before I continue, so you can technically do this with any router. I just decided to do this on this little nano router just because it's portable. But in actuality, I mean, you could go right ahead and basically use any router that you want to go ahead and do this uh, to, as long as it just has an ethernet port and it's able to do DHCP, you're, you're technically, you know, good to go, as well as Wi-Fi. Go ahead and select the wireless access point, which is going to be this TP-Link underscore 4908. Connect. And let's see. So this one, actually, the, the password is actually on the router. So let me go ahead and basically type that in there. Okay, so we are connected to the router, so let's go right ahead and get into the web interface. So in some routers, you can actually type in a little kind of like a URL that, you know, the manufacturer technically designates that you could go right ahead and remote into it. But for this time, I'm gonna go ahead and show you exactly how you can find it uh, the way I usually go right ahead and do so. So the first thing you need to do is open up a command line. Okay, so here, all we gotta do is just do an IP config since we're already connected to the router. And as you can see right here, let me go ahead and maximize this a little bit better, is you can actually see that we do get an IP address of 192.168.0.100. Uh, subnet mask is just a CIDR24 and we do get the default gateway, which would be the router. So that would be 192.168.0.1. So we need to go ahead and access that IP address. So let me go ahead and bring up Firefox. And here we're gonna type in 192.168.0.1. There we go. So we're in. So username and password should be on the back of your router. So for this one, it's just admin, admin, login. 
I'm gonna go right ahead and basically walk you through this little quick setup. Uh, like I said, I mean, depending on what type of router you have, you might, this might be just completely different, but it's technically gonna be the same steps as long as you uh, just go to the right place to go ahead and do this. So here, let's just do next. Um, for this model, we do have some options that we can select. So we could go ahead and just basically have a wireless router. That, that's technically just the default of it. We do have a hotspot router. Um, and then of course we do have a at home. So we do have an access point, a range extender, and we could go ahead and set it up as a client. So for this tutorial, I'm just gonna go ahead and just use the access point just because we are gonna be utilizing the actual ethernet as a regular just LAN port. So it's not gonna be a WAN. So we'll go ahead and select that, hit next. Here, you could go ahead and set up the SSID as well as the password. Um, so for this tutorial, I'm just gonna go ahead and just leave it as default. So if you wanna go ahead and change it yourself, you could go ahead and do so here. Hit next. In here, it's gonna actually say, you know, if, you, if I wanna set up a, a smart IP DHCP setup. I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up a static and I'm gonna go ahead and change the network address. And the reason I'm doing this is because if you actually follow the instructions that I did for the Raspberry Pi 4 Open Media Vault, uh, this IP address is actually on a 192.168.1 uh, network. So it's not on the, on the zero, which is 192.168.0 network. So I need to go ahead and change that. So it's gonna be a one. Now for the IP address, uh, as long as it's outside of the DHCP scope, I really don't care. So this could be 254 or a 1 1.1 because at the end of the day, there's no default gateway. It's not gonna go out to the internet. Now DHCP server, you wanna go ahead and enable it. Um, I will tell you this. So because we are changing the IP address network um, already, as soon as I finish the configuration, the DHCP scope will actually change with it. So, which is pretty cool. So I don't have to go back in there and, and change that, but I'll go ahead and show you exactly what I mean in a little bit. So here, we're just gonna hit next. Just an overview of basically what, you know, what we're gonna be doing. Uh, at this point, let's just go right ahead and reboot the router. Click okay. All right, so router is rebooting, so let's go ahead and let it do its thing, and we'll be right back. All right, so it looks like I'm back online, so it already connected back to the actual um, Wi-Fi. So one other thing that, since we changed the actual IP address of the actual router, so most likely this IP address of 192.168.0.1 will no longer work. So if I actually go in there, it's most likely just gonna be like, it won't respond which is fine because we already know what the uh, new IP address is. So that IP address is gonna be 192.168.1.254. Hit enter, and there we go. So we're back online. So let me go ahead and show you exactly what I mean by the DHCP scope. So let's go ahead and log in. And I believe, let's see, so it would be, uh, there it is, DHCP and DHCP settings. So here you can already see that it did change uh, the network for it. So originally, like I said, it was in the dot zero network. Now it's in the dot one network. And the starting IP address is gonna be from 100 all the way to 199. Uh, like I said, I mean, default gateway for this setup, we're not gonna be going out to the internet. So you can leave that um, just by default, just leave it like that. Uh, DNS, you won't need that as well. So you can just leave it at a zero, zero. So as long as you're just technically leaving the router as well as the Raspberry Pi outside of this scope. And like I said, this one is at a 192.168.1.220 network. This and the router is at a 254 network. It really won't be any IP conflicts when you're actually connecting devices into this. Okay, so now that we already got that going, let's go ahead and connect them together and then I'll go ahead and show you how you can access the actual Raspberry Pi. So in this portion, I'm not gonna go ahead and show you exactly how to configure you know, the Raspberry Pi with Open Media Vault. Uh, my previous video that I did, uh, what was it, a couple weeks ago, will actually show you step-by-step -step on how to do this. So as long as you just keep the IP address uh, the same, you'll, you'll be good. 
so we have everything technically up and running. Uh, everything's powered on. Of course, uh, we do have blinking lights on the Raspberry Pi, which is good. So that means it's communicating. So let's go right ahead and go into first the desktop and see if I can hit um, the actual Raspberry Pi first. Let's go right ahead and see if we can remote into this Raspberry Pi. So if I do uh, Windows R on the keyboard, open up a run command and let's do uh, backslash backslash 192.168.1.220. And if we hit enter, let's see what happens. Ah, it went to the other screen, but there it is. All right, so I already saved the, the actual credentials for the Samba user. Uh, so I already have access to this. So if I just go to share. Okay, so now that we're actually inside of the share drive, we can actually see that we do have a couple of files. So if we go ahead and basically try to create a file here, you know, let's just, uh, let's do a folder first. There it is. So we're able to create everything. So the permissions technically, you know, are still working, um, you know, inside of the Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and run, let's run an MP4. Let's see how it, how it, you know, if it actually performs and, it, and you can actually play it. Okay, so there we go. So uh, this video is playing right now. So you, as you can see, I mean, I just had to go ahead and basically lower the volume, but yeah, there it is. I mean, the, you know, the network attached storage is working uh, and you're able to go ahead and basically access all these files. Alrighty, so now that we already know that everything is working, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I connect my phone inside of this actual Raspberry Pi uh, Open Media Vault NAS. So the first thing I need to do is I actually need to connect directly to the actual access point first. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so my phone already technically knows that there's no way to go out to the internet, which technically we already know it's not gonna work. So at this point, I could just go ahead and connect. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm just gonna go ahead and connect only this time. Okay, so it looks like we are connected. Now let's go right ahead and go and open up another program. Now this is actually gonna be the program that it's gonna allow you to actually access the network attached storage. So if I go ahead and basically scroll up, you can see that there is an Explorer icon here. So let's go ahead and just basically open that up. It's gonna give you uh, some more options on like, you know, to go ahead and get into your internal storage, SD card, uh, the root of the phone as well. But the main one we wanna go ahead and use is the LAN portion of it. So here we're just gonna click on add server, add server once again. Label will do, uh, let's do uh, just basically raspberry and then pi. Hit next. Oh, actually, there we go. Raspberry Pi It's probably gonna make it a little bit easier. Okay, so here we need the actual uh, server IP address or name. So here I'm just gonna go ahead and select it. And the Raspberry Pi is gonna be 192.168.1.220. There we go. So that's uh, that's squared away. Next thing we need to do is the username and password. So for this one, um, like I said, please view you know the tutorial video that I made for the Raspberry Pi. Um, inside of that tutorial, we did uh, just a basic user. And then the actual password itself, uh, let me go ahead and type that in right now. Okay, so there it is. So we already have everything technically squared away that we're gonna need. Let's go ahead and hit save. And let's see if we can go ahead and access it now. All right, so if we click on it, there it is. So we see the share. So if we click on it and yeah, we're able to see everything in there. So let's go ahead and basically uh, play that video real quick. And there it is. So it's it's playing. So we're, we're accessing everything via just the wireless network and then basically going into the actual Raspberry Pi to access all of these files. Alrighty, everybody. Well, that is the end of this tutorial. Uh, just to go ahead and basically talk a little bit more about this little idea that I had. So originally I was just, you know, looking at like, okay, how I can I set up, you know, a Raspberry Pi as, you know, a network attached storage. But then I was like, well, how can I take that, you know, with me and access files, you know, if I, if I need to. And to tell you the truth, I mean, I'm not gonna be editing files or anything like that. It was more of an entertainment type of thing. It was more to, you know, add a playlist of music or, you know, go ahead and basically load up on, you know, movies or, or something like that. 
So my my focus was more on it's like, hey, if I go out on a trip and technically I don't have, you know, signal, you know, to grad hand basically either, you know, stream music or anything like that. Uh, technically, how can I go right ahead and basically set something up like this? Now, in certain cases, you know, for me, I, I could go ahead and just basically store my stuff here. But let's just say, you know, you're on a road trip and you have your kids with you. And, you know, instead of just having movies on their devices, you can go ahead and basically set something, something up like this and just connect it to, you know, the rental vehicle or, you know, if you have an RV or anything like that. And then just basically have everybody connected to that to go ahead and basically view their videos. So it's just basically just an idea that I had, um, you know, for everybody, probably everybody's not going to like this idea that it's like, no, I want to have internet or, you know, you could go ahead and basically store all that, you know, stuff in your phone. And I understand that it's fine, but it was just basically this little idea that I wanted to go ahead and explore and see if I could go ahead and basically, you know, get, you know, bring it, bring it to life. Alrighty, everybody. Well, uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, like always, I really do hope you enjoy the content and we will catch you on the next one.